Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Alejandro Cordova, a swine nutritionist for Smithfield Foods. So before we get started, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself? Sure, Clayton. Thank you very much for the introduction and thank you for having me uh, and to be part of this episode. Um, So I'm Ecuadorian. I'm from Ecuador. I did my undergrad there. And after that, I had opportunity to work with the biggest animal nutrition company in Ecuador for about four years. And after that, around 2015, I came to the U.S. to um, get my master's and later get a Ph.D. in animal and poultry science and also a Ph.D. in nutrition. Uh, And... uh, about January 2020, I had this amazing opportunity of joining the Smithfield team. Awesome. So let's talk about a little bit of the, the work you've done there um, at Smithfield. I've seen that you've done some work in studying um, trypsin inhibitors and soybean meal and kind of their effect on pigs. So I guess to start, what are trypsin inhibitors and then what have you guys seen in some of your studies? Yeah, so uh, basically your trypsin inhibitors are a small peptides or protein that inhibit the, the, the enzyme trypsin. So basically what it's doing is slowing down your protein di- digestion and digestibility. So basically you are not efficient by breaking down those uh, into a small peptides and being digested and, and, uh, and being available for, for, for animals in general. So that's where the importance of these trypsin inhibitors, why they are so important for, for, for on that perspective of animal nutrition, right? Because you're being less efficient, you can impair growth rate, you can impair pancreatic activity because of that. So uh, basically, and especially in young animals, as their GI tract, as their gut is not is an immature gut, then normally you will see uh, uh, bigger impacts, negative impacts in those in those animals. So, following up on uh, the two trials that we run in the company, and 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 probably this is one of the uh, big opportunities of of being a, a big company that probably in the U.S. or one of those operations that uses uh, uh, extremely big amounts of uh, and volumes of soybean meal. So what we did in 2020 and we repeated in 2021, we basically collected samples of soybean meal ranging in different crude protein levels, uh, starting 44, then 45, 46, 47, and higher than 48. And basically, we try to characterize the different nutrient profiles for, for, for those soybean meal levels. So we collected samples from all over uh, the U.S. because we have operations in the Midwest, in the East and the West side of the U.S. And uh, we, we were working in parallel with a couple of companies that help us running these samples and part of Part, part of those analyses were also inc- uh, also included the trypsin inhibitor analysis by wet chemistry and also by NIRs. So it was, I think that for, for both years, I think it was a pretty complete uh, type of a study that helped us to have a, the big picture of what we are dealing in terms of variation in, in en- energy levels in total indigestible amino acids and trypsin inhibitors for our suppliers. Gotcha. So we've kind of talked about, and you've mentioned as well, why the trypsin inhibitors um, can have a quite a negative effect on pigs. So what nutritional strategies or other management strategies have you found to be effective at kind of deactivating or lowering the effect of those trypsin inhibitors? Yeah, so one of the main uh, strategies in depending where you are in the industry, if you are in Latin America, Brazil, or in the U.S. or in Mexico, uh, or 
or even independently on that, one of the main strategy is to kind of limit the maximum inclusion level of soybean meal in those first two feeds in the nursery in, in, in the nursery phase. That's kind of like one of the uh, strategies that are that is widely used uh, among nutritionists, but. Uh, depending on that inclusion level of soybean meals, we could be losing some important economic opportunities that if you are, for example, a big operation of a mega producers, and in the U.S. we have at least uh, more than 10 mega producers in the country. So uh, that will have some quite important impact, uh, economic impact. So uh, that's that's why it's so important to try to understand this variation in trypsin inhibitors and, and, and amino acids and energies. Another nutritional strategy that is also used is the usage of exogenous enzymes, such as carbohydrates and also proteases. Yeah, so uh, proteases have been, uh, recent published studies have showed that they can um, help to reduce the negative effects of trypsin inhibitors, and it will promote uh, protein digestion and amino acid digestion, and therefore it's uh, they will they will help uh, with that uh, feed efficiency in your in your animals for especially in monogastric if we are talking about a, a, a piglet or, or 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 a chick in poultry. So, gotcha. And then also from uh, kind of the work you guys did when you were measuring the trypsin inhibitor level um, in this soybean meal, uh, how, how easy is it really to kind of measure that? Is it easy enough that you can um, do it fairly frequently and then see kind of be able, based on the level, know what um, amounts you can set your soybean meal to? Or is it kind of slow and cumbersome and not really, um, not really quick and easy to do in a commercial setting? Yeah, that's a great question, Clayton, because um, uh, as long as, as I'm aware of, there there are at least three different companies in the U.S. that they already have those models, those predictions, uh, and, and those models can be easily implemented in if, if, if these operations have, for example, NIR equipment, right? So... It will depend uh, the level of operation. It will depend how fast you are moving uh, soybean meal in your at at the feed meal. So th- that will it will depend basically on 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 how fast you can react in terms in terms of feed formulation or 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 um, uh, getting samples and send those samples to an external lab as well and run it by wet chemistry. That's another. That's another strategy, but again, probably uh, if, if, if you have this type of NAR equipment at your feed mill or at your lab, then probably that will be the, a quicker response on, 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 on your end if you would like to adjust your inclusion level of soybean meal. So one other question I had, um, with trypsin inhibitor levels, have you guys seen any ranges based on um, region or continent that uh, the soybean meal comes from? Uh, yes, Clayton, that's a great question. So basically within the U.S., the range that we identify of trypsin inhibitors activities was around from one to even up to five or six milligrams per grams of trypsin inhibitors activity. Uh, normally what what is recommended to have in the finished feed is to have about no more than 1.25 trypsin inhibitors activity milligrams per gram in those first two nursery diets. So only there you all you you already have a big a big variability and depending where you're getting your soybean meal and your inclusion level of soybean meal, then you will have those uh, that concentration in, in in that in that first two uh, nursery feeds. And when you compare with soybean meals from other origins and by origins i'm going to talk about countries then there's at least three uh, published articles that uh, compare uh, total amino acids energy levels and and trypsin inhibitors concentrations in soybean meal depending on the origin and uh, it's it's you can you can observe that 
uh, for other countries and in other regions, the assumption is that you are going to find a higher trypsin inhibitors activity in those soybean mills. So uh, what it was pretty interesting is that from the published reports and from the published data uh, that is available in, in, in the journals for soybean meal from the U.S., you will find a maximum level reported of about uh, three milligrams per gram of trypsin inhibitors activity. But what is was what, what it was really interesting on our end and the, in the couple of studies that we run is is that the maximum level that we found was up to five milligrams per gram of trypsin inhibitors activities. Combining basic science with real world facilities results in swine nutrition programs that deliver impactful bottom line performance. Hubbard Feeds is focused on helping you achieve your goals and make your life easier along the way. Choose a company that can match your appetite for innovation by visiting hubbardfeeds.com forward slash swine research. Well, I believe that's all we have time for. So thank you again for coming on the show and sharing all this with us. Thank you very much, Clayton. And I would like to thank also our QA supervisors, which they were uh, the, 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 the main people that were involved with these uh, study. They were help. They, they were helping with the organization of collecting data and submitting those samples to these other companies that help us with this analysis. So I, I really wanted to thank our our two lab supervisors, Teresa Wiley and Eddie Ross, and everyone else. Thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details about your research to hello at wisenetics.com. Mm-hmm.